George Berkeley, an Irishman from the 18th century, applies Occam's razor to Locke's theory. According to Berkeley, all ideas, except self and God, are secondary qualities. Using Occam's razor, Berkeley chops out the concept of primary qualities. Berkeley is an extreme idealist. For Berkeley, only the mental world exists. A physical object is the sum total of the sense data. From that object and sense data only exist in minds. For us, there are no objects. There is only what our senses report about those objects. Coining Latin phrases is popular among philosophers, and Berkeley has, has one just like Descartes does. Berkeley's is esse est percepe, which translates into English as to be is to be perceived. For something to exist, it must be perceived by a mind, and it is lucky for us that nature makes our task of perceiving reality easier by arranging things in recognizable patterns. Wait, there's more. Like Descartes, Berkeley is faced with the problem of solipsism, but he has a solution. Language is used to unify ideas in our minds. We give a word for something, pain, but we have no way of knowing if your sense data is the same as mine. I say, burning my hand on a hot stove hurts. You say, burning your hand on the stove hurts. How do we really know that we feel the same thing when we burn our hands? We don't. That's why language is so important. Language holds the social world together. It gives us a means to communicate with each other, even when we are unsure what we are seeing, hearing, feeling, touching, smelling, and tasting the same things. We are floating in our own solipsistic world and can only be sure of our own consciousness. But we are all united by the thin and fragile strands of language through which we communicate. For Berkeley, language is crucial. Language also helps us find truth. Berkeley's method for determining truth is simple. Truth is determined democratically. In a room full of 100 people, if 93 of the people say there is a big ogre in the room, then there is a big ogre in the room. Reality becomes the sense data we can use to successfully predict the greatest number of other sense data. Everything in this theory is about sense data communicated through language. Did I mention that Berkeley was a bishop? He is, and that means God has to be in there somewhere. Remember reading about Descartes' wax experiment in chapter two, as well as the discussion of substance when you read about Locke in this chapter? For Descartes and Locke, substance produces sense data, and substance comes from God. For Berkeley, there is no physical substance. There is only sense data, which exists in the mind. According to Berkeley, sense data comes from God. God is the center. God perceives and the center holds. If God didn't exist, the center would not hold. If esse es percepe, then what happens to an empty room? If there's no one to perceive it, the room ceases to exist, according to this theory. However, when we leave the room, turn off the lights, and shut the door, the room still exists because God is there to perceive the room. Wait a second. If esse est percepe, who perceives God? What about the other exception, self? Berkeley's theory has a few points that need explaining. You can take a look at your textbook for a summary of the objections to Berkeley's theory. Stay tuned for David Hume, who generously takes a look at these hangups in Berkeley's empiricist thinking. And what's that in Hume's hand? My sense data report to me that Hume is carrying a razor.